Metro and its partners. All right, we're and interrupting John's speech, speech right at now, piece right now to take you to Nevada, where the Nevada. Las Vegas Metro Police Detectives Department is holding a news conference on last night's concert massacre. Sheriff Joseph Lombardo is expected to give an update on the situation. On Let's listen in. We have recovered 23 firearms at Mandalay Bay and 19 firearms at his home in Mesquite. I want to emphasize we believe Paddock is solely responsible for this heinous act. We are aware of the rumors outside of the media and also on social media that there was more than one assailant. We have no information or evidence to support that theory or that rumor. We believe there was only one shooter and that was Stephen Paddock. We are doing a thorough investigation and only want to provide what is accurate to you. We will only give information that we have vetted and know to be true. I will not be speaking or answering questions on issues that we do not have the facts yet. The latest estimate on the number of injured still stands at 527, which the sheriff put out earlier this afternoon. We have 59 that are deceased. Our homicide detectives are working around the clock to process the scene as soon as they possibly can. We understand that there are personal belongings that people need to retrieve from uh, all of the locations. Once we come close to clearing that scene, we will provide more information for how people can get their belongings, and we are coordinating that with the local hotels and with the venue so that people can get their belongings back. The Family Resource Center will play a role in that task. We want people to know that the center is up and running at the Las Vegas Convention Center, and we are asking families and friends who live in Las Vegas to physically go to that center, which is located at the Convention Center. The hotline number has changed due to some technical difficulties. That new number is 1-800-536-9488. Again, that is 1-800-536-9488. 9488. The number that we gave out previously is no longer in use. However, if you are a local person from Las Vegas and are looking for a loved one, please go down to the Family Resource Center in person. That is the best way to get assistance. I also want to comment on some steps that MGM Resorts has taken. They are coordinating rooms at no cost at the Bellagio for families that are coming into town. They're also coordinating travel through Southwest Airlines. They are coordinating crisis counselors for people that worked as vendors, employees, and guests. And the American Red Cross has been given uh, space over at Circus Circus to establish a headquarters for the local community until they get some national assets in. We've had an overwhelming turnout of people standing in line to donate blood at the United Blood Services and at UMC, but they cannot take any more people right now. We are asking that you not go down there until at least tomorrow afternoon, if not the next day. They have enough supply to last them for the foreseeable future. People are also donating food in large amounts. While the gesture is appreciated, Metro does not have the ability to coordinate delivery or distribution and we're asking that if you are going to donate food, do so with either bottled water or sealed food to the Red Cross at 1771 East Flamingo. There have been a remarkable amount of support from our community. We have been asked by concerned individuals from near and far asking how they can help. At this time, the GoFundMe page set up for the victims by Commissioner Sisolak and Sheriff Lombardo is the best mechanism to show your support to the victims. We do not anticipate having any further updates tonight. When we do have further updates tomorrow, we will send out a press release notifying you that we will be giving more information. These past 20 hours have been trying and we know we have a long way to go. I'm proud of the courage and resiliency displayed by all our first responders on this event. I also want to appeal to you in the public and the media. We know of no known threats in our Las Vegas area. If we did know of anything that could harm the safety and security of our citizens, we would tell you that and our department would act upon that. Please allow our department the ability to do what they do the best, investigate crime and keep you safe. 
Uh, with that, I will turn it over to uh, Commissioner Sisolak, who has a few words. I just have a very few words I'd like to say. Uh, again, this is, I've had several of these today, and it's been a long, long day for a lot of us. But uh, I just left Mr. Jim Murr, and I want to have a special thank you to two groups that uh, we had our first responders. Obviously, our medical personnel responded. But, but for the fact of uh, the great work done by the men and women of Metro, and the security at Mandalay Bay, we would have lost hundreds if not thousands more lives. I mean, they were able to triangulate and locate that room and get people in there and uh, saved countless lives. And for that, uh, we will be eternally grateful for the work that you did uh, and in conjunction with MGM. We did set up with the sheriff the GoFundMe campaign, and I appreciate Todd saying something. As when I walked in here, we have received an excess of 30,000 donations, exceeding $2.2 .2 million. Uh, when we started it, we set the goal at $500,000. We got to $100,000, and one individual called and said, I will get you to your goal. And he donated $400,000. That individual was anonymous until now. He has uh, said that we could release his name. It was Stephen Klubeck donated $400,000 uh, to support this community. We ask you all to support our community. Uh, and again, I'd like to ask you, next time you see one of our first responders, whether it be Metro or it be Fire or what have you, tell them thank you because uh, we owe them an eternal debt of gratitude for what they did. And I've got uh, some other speakers, Commission, or, uh, Congressman Titus, and I know they have a few words to say. Senator Mastowin. Well, thank you very much. This uh, horrendous act of evil happened right in the heart of District 1, which I'm honored to represent. The whole day is revolved around that act. It's been police briefings and talking with the FBI, visiting hospitals, uh, all the, the things that kind of are associated with an act of war. But we also heard stories of individual heroism, people helping others through the gate, over the fence, shielding their bodies, standing in line for blood. Those are the kind of stories that we need to focus on. And it's so appropriate that we've ended the day with an ecumenical church service on the strip where we gathered to grieve for the fallen, to thank our wonderful first responders who have done so much in coordination with each other, and just to hold hands with family and friends, to, to cry, and to recommit ourselves to do all that we can so that this never happens again. Um, it, it has been a long day, as you can imagine, uh, for everybody here. and. Um, uh, like my colleagues and everyone here in Southern Nevada, have to thank uh, the first responders, our law enforcement, uh, the medical community here, our EMTs, everybody who uh, ran into the face of danger to save lives, uh, many lives uh, that uh, families now are uh, concerned about those who have been injured, families now who are dealing with the loss of loved ones. Um, I, too, had a niece there last night at the event. Um, she was one of the lucky ones who made it home, but there are many who are still injured and who did not. And now it is time for all of our community to come together to bring comfort and relief to these families. Uh, I know for all of us this week is going to be about those families, those have been injured, and how we can do everything in this community to continue to support them. Uh, as well as supporting um, the ongoing investigation that needs to take place independent, let them do their job. There'll be plenty of time to second guess. There'll be plenty of time to play politics. But right now is the time to come together uh, as a community uh, and, and, and support and comfort one another. Well, good evening. I'm Mark Hutchison, Lieutenant Governor of the State of Nevada, and uh, on behalf of the State of Nevada, I want to thank everyone <clears throat> who's already been thanked uh, uh, repeatedly today, and, and we're going to continue to thank them over and over again. Everyone who ran towards the bullets when everybody else was running away from the bullets, those who met the uh, victims at the hospitals. I spent most of my day at the hospitals, and uh, matter of fact, I just came from Sunrise. Uh, Sunrise took care of 214 of the, of the victims. 
uh, and uh, performed uh, over 90 emergency uh, surgeries. Just extraordinary efforts uh, on behalf of our medical community. They handled this uh, tragedy with competence and and uh, and character, and we're very very proud of them as as Nevadans. I told you last time that uh, uh, UMC and, and Spring Valley both. Uh, uh, performed admirably. I spent some time there as well. If you arrived at any of those facilities alive, you are continue to be alive. I confirm that again uh, this afternoon. Um, it's just the, the 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 best of the Nevada spirit, uh, the best of our community. Uh, Las Vegas has been my home, uh, born and raised here, raised six children here, and what we've seen today at the close of this day is the best, uh, and in the highest traditions of Las Vegans and Nevadans and Americans. Um, you've heard story after story when you meet with these families about uh, their guardian angels who were at that tragic site, who carried them out of harm's way or found vehicles and took them to the hospital. And um, it's just inspiring in a day that has been uh, depressing and dark. It's inspiring to see what Americans do for each other. And so to all of those who have helped today, I say God bless you. And uh, we'll get through this together with our faith in God and the, uh, the American and the Nevadan spirit that we have. Thank you. I'll take uh, a small number of questions, um, and then we'll end it for tonight. Mr. Assistant Sheriff, you went to 23 guns. Are they all rifles? And how do we explain the difference from 17? Well, Ken, like uh, the sheriff explained earlier today, and as I explained um, moments ago, our, our information as the investigation continues can change. We put out the information that we have at that moment in time, and sometimes those numbers will change. But there are 23 firearms at Manalee Bay and 19 out of his house. What makes it the investigation? Um, is it a homicide investigation? Are, are fit detectives involved? Is this, is this case putting a strain on their uh, manpower? So I can tell you that uh, it's a homicide investigation and homicide is investigating that specific aspect of the crime. We have every resource available on our agency working, and I can assure you that uh, the sheriff has made a point that we have resources both in the neighborhoods and around the community as well as the Las Vegas Strip and downtown. That has not diminished, it actually has increased. Hold on, one at a time, because... Are you trying to confirm right now? Pardon me? I have not personally gone through the entire list of victims, so I can't answer that question for you right now. Hold on. The majority of the uh, people in the world are not trained like yourself to know what to do when gunfire you know, happens. If last night Jason Aldean had, had managed to say to the crowd, take cover before he ran off stage and took cover, do you think this could have saved lives? Uh, I don't know. I wasn't there. Um, I don't know what Jason Aldean was thinking when he was on the stage. Uh, I do know that a common thing is, is when people hear gunfire, they run for cover, right? That's a natural human instinct. I don't know what he said before he left the stage, uh, but the investigation will bring that out. If he did, How long did Paddock shoot for? Was it continuous or did he stop? And, I mean, how long do you think the shooting actually lasted? How long was he shooting out the crowd? We are still putting that timeline together. Sheriff, can, okay. you, us, can you give us a timeline of the movements? When did he shoot the, the security guard, and did he continue shooting out of the window after he shot the security guard? I know that he shot the one security guard up on the 32nd floor, but I don't know um, if he continued to shoot after that or not. Have you what time is he on hold on, hours? hold on. Detail on his movements, 24, 48, 72 hours before the shooting. That's, that's what our detectives are and our partners are working on right now. It will be some time before we are able to give you that in a chronological order and with a um, amount of confidence that it's accurate. Have you made any progress at all on his motives? There's reports that he was sending money to the Philippines. So, like I said earlier, we're hunting down and tracing down every single clue that we can get in his background. Uh, until we confirm all of those things that are floating around out in the media and in social media, um, I can't comment on that. Any time people, when you're going to get those hard drives opened up and looking into them that you found a mesquite, second question, did he specifically request that hotel room at the Manly? Do you want to answer that? 
No, we don't have a specific timeline. I don't know that yet. Did he have a computer in the room? We did receive, we did uh, see several pieces of media, including the computer. Have you examined it? Does it give you anything about motive? It's ongoing. Especially in Browse, one other question. After the raid in Reno, can you tell us anything about what was taken there, if any weapons, explosives, computers, or clues that give us uh, <coughs> something about motive? Nothing that I can speak of, and that uh, scene is still being resolved as we speak. Let me uh, let me let me let me emphasize something to you that might help. I know that you are all very eager to find out exactly what his motive was or what was going through his head or what he was doing up to two weeks ago. I promise you the sheriff will provide that information when we have confirmed it. It doesn't make sense for us to put out information that is not accurate and uh, isn't timely and reliable. So please have some patience with our agency and our partners to get you that information. I promise you we will provide it to you when the time comes. Can you explain how he got that many guns to a hotel? What was your question, sir? Just what time exactly did his room get breached? Um, I don't have, do you guys have that? I don't have the exact <coughs> No. I imagine someone must have that. We have a time log of everything that we do, um, and that's what the detectives will be putting together as part of their investigation is from start to finish and including that entire timeline. So we'll probably have more information on that probably tomorrow. So I'm going to take two more questions, and then we're going to be done for the night. How many guns got to the hotel? The Family Resource Center, is that just for families who are looking for loved ones, or is that where they go if they need help with the resources that are being provided for them? They can go there for help and resources, okay? If they're looking for a loved one or a friend and they're in town, they need to go there. It's at the convention center. Or the ones that are coming in, they can go there as well. They also have that 800 number that they can call ahead of time if they need to find out a piece of information in the back. Specifically about that search warrant, the additional one that you guys executed today, you were originally saying Northern Nevada. Can you now confirm that that was in Reno? Yes. Sir. Yes. No, but I can tell you that that's part of our investigation of uh, determining just that. Obviously, every hotel has video. I'm sure that we're going back and reviewing every ounce of that. Do you, so, do you find any more guns as part of the investigation? Like, is, there, is that possible that that number will go up even harder? Uh, I would say that in the areas that we've been so far, I would say no. But until we're done with the investigation, I'm not going to marry to that number. Okay. Last one, Ken. At the hotel? Not other than what the sheriff put out today at 4 o'clock or Are 3 o'clock. I think that we've got all the guns out of the suite for the two rooms where the from which shots were fired? Yes. So you're confident that you have all the I'm confident in the number that I gave you of what we have recovered. Can you give some clarification Sheriff. on the subject? All right, that's it. Thank you. All right, we've been listening to officials there in Las Vegas with the very latest on that shooting. You heard from the assistant sheriff, Todd Fasulo, the number of firearms recovered at Mandalay Bay is now 23, 23 guns at Mandalay Bay, 19 guns were recovered from the gunman's house. We also heard uh, in response to a question, the assistant sheriff say that they um, there were several pieces of media, or at least one of the other officials rather, said there were several pieces of media in that hotel room, including a computer, but there were no additional details on that. At one point, the assistant sheriff saying, we believe there was only one shooter, and that's Stephen Paddock.